Hello everyone, this is Dr. Rahul Haware from the channel Ask Applying Scientific Knowledge and I welcome you in this ninth module of Rheology and we are again going to talk about non-Newtonian liquids and specifically plastic and dilatant liquids. So we will see where are we using these liquids in dosage form designs or in our day-to-day -day life. So when we are thinking about plastic liquids, where are we using them? Well, when we are developing various suspensions or ointments, we are using the concept of plastic liquids. How about dilatant liquids? Let's take an example from our day-to-day -day life. For example, whipping cream. So if you see that whipping cream, uh, which is filled in this can, and when we'll shake this can, you will see, you will feel that there is a liquid. But as soon as when you are squeezing this canister, what's happening? That liquid is converting into this nice sweeping cream, which you are applying on your strawberries or on your ice cream. So what's going on here? Well, the viscosity of the dilatant liquids is increasing with application of stress, with increase in stress, isn't it? So we will gonna see all these things in next couple of slides. So let's start. So let's start with the plastic fluids or Bingham fluids. And we have this relationship. On X axis we have shear stress and on Y axis we have shear rate. And what's you can see here? Well, when you are applying, let's say, let's take some numbers from zero to 100 dynes per centimeter square shear rate. And similarly, we can go from 0 to 100 per second shear rate. So what's going on here? Let's say this is the value of 50 in the middle. So you, when you are applying certain shear stress up to here, let's say this is a 40 dynes per centimeter square, things are not changing. But suddenly, after 50, these liquids, they follow the straight line relationship. And what is that straight line relationship? Well, this is a directly proportional relationship between shear rate and shear stress. And who follows that proportional relationship? Well, Newtonian liquids, isn't it? Now, so what's going on here? Again, there is one certain critical point here. And uh, that critical point is called as yield value. So you have to apply certain shear stress and once you apply that certain shear stress, these liquids follows the Newtonian relationship. And that yield stress or yield value is very critical or very characteristics for plastic fluids. None of other fluids, they do have these yield values except plastic fluids. So that's the way you will identify the plastic fluids. And once we, have, we are applying this yield value, these liquids follow the Newtonian relationship or they behave like a Newtonian liquids. They behave like a Newtonian liquids. Please keep in mind, again, I'm switching the axis X and Y. On my X axis, we have shear rate and on my Y axis, we have shear stress. And why is that? Because from this kind of plot, we are directly getting the viscosity values. Now again, I'm applying shear rate from 0 to 100 per second and shear stress from 0 to 100 dynes per centimeter square. So if we are Newtonian liquid, what will happen? Well, things will start from the zero, isn't it? These liquids follow the straight line relationship or proportional relationship from the zero, zero shear stress and zero shear rate. And that is a Newtonian liquid. Is that happening with plastic fluids? Well, it's not happening like that. What's going on here? Well, this is like they have certain Y intercept. And why is that Y intercept? This is a Y inter intercept. And why is that Y intercept? Because of this yield value, isn't it? And that's Y intercept is called as yield stress. And from the slope, you are getting the plastic viscosity. So this is again a straight line equation y is equal to mx plus c. But here in case of Newtonian liquids c is equal to 0. So for Newtonian liquids it is y is equal to mx. But in case of non-Newtonian liquids, plastic non-Newtonian liquids we have y is equal to mx plus c. 
That's the big difference between plastic fluid and Newtonian fluids. So once you apply that certain shear stress, you are getting the proportional relationship. So that's the equation tau is equal to mu p gamma dot plus tau zero. And what is tau zero? Yield stress at zero shear rate. Yield stress at zero shear rate. So that's the shear stress you are applying in order to flow these liquids. And what is mu p? That is the plastic viscosity. So now I keep talking about this yield stress or yield value. So what is the meaning of this yield stress and yield value in pharmaceutical development? So this is the definition and I really hate about the definitions. So yield value is the minimum stress required to induce the flow. So let's say you are developing suspension, isn't it? So what is the yield value means? How many times you can shake the bottle in order to flow the product? So let's say I have suspension A and suspension B. In case of suspension A, you have to just flow, uh, you have to just shake the bottle only three times to bring all solids in the body of liquid. In case of suspension B, you have to shake the bottle 30 times. Which suspension will have high yield value? Absolutely suspension B will have high yield value as compared to suspension A. And which product will be more acceptable for the patients? Absolutely suspension A, isn't it? So that's the way you need to interpret or you need to translate that knowledge while developing the your product. Now how about ointment? So in case of ointment, the same yield value is translated in this way. How much force you require to spread material on the skin surface? So let's say I have high yield value ointment. What does that mean? Well, for this ointment, you require too much force to rub the ointment on your skin, isn't it? How about low yield value ointment? Well, this ointment will be running it will be just running on your skin. So do you want these kind of ointments when it just right away running on your skin and another one require too much force to rub on the skin? Well, no. So you need to optimize, you need to optimize yield value for the ointment, for these plastic ointments. And that's the way you will be using this knowledge to develop really efficient dosage form. Either it is a suspension or ointment. And that's why you are learning this, these plastic fluids. So it's time to move to the next liquids. That, that is a dilatant liquids or dilatant fluids. What's going on here? Again, you have shear stress on X axis and shear rate on Y axis. And look at that. When you are applying shear stress, the viscosity is increasing. It's just like this. So what are the examples of dilatant fluid? Well, as you have seen in very first slide, that is a whipping cream. When you are shaking this whipping cream, you can feel that it's a liquid. But once you are squeezing the, that canister, well, everything is converted into nice cream, which you want. So viscosity is increasing. What is another example? When you are going on the beach, and if you take the wet sand, wet sand, what will happen? Well, that sand is flowing, but when you are squeezing, you are getting really solid uh, structure. So you are increasing the viscosity. You are increasing the viscosity when you are applying the stress. So when you are increasing the shear stress, viscosity is increasing. And that's the characteristics of these dilatant fluids. What is another example? Well, this is a suspension of corn starch. Suspension of corn starch. So what's going on in case of suspension of corn starch? You can see here in this animation, it's flowing very nicely, but when you are hitting this corn starch suspension with high force, it's becoming very solid there. So why it's becoming solid? So let's figure it out now in next slide. So as I said, this is a corn starch suspension. So if you will zoom in this corn starch suspension, what will get? Well, it is a suspension. Of course, it has a solid and liquid. So what is a solid? Well, it is a corn starch and corn starch molecules are really bigger molecules as compared to water molecules. And this is a water molecule. And this is what you will see under microscope. You have corn starch molecules and these are the water molecules. So these corn starch molecules, they are suspended in the body of water. So when you are applying very weak force, what will happen? Well, 
these water molecules they will slip away between the cornstarch molecules but the moment you are applying very strong forces what's going on well you are squeezing out these water molecules which are located in between the cornstarch molecules and you are getting this very solid localized structure which has high viscosity which has very high viscosity high viscosity okay that's going on so you are taking out the water molecules which are in between the big cornstarch molecules and moment you are releasing the force it's going back again these water molecules they are finding their ways between these cornstarch molecules so here the things are getting opposite as compared to other liquids moment you are applying the force or shear stress when you are increasing the shear stress you are increasing the viscosity you can see here this is a localized increase in viscosity and moment you are decreasing the shear stress you are decreasing the viscosity because of these water molecules they are finding their ways between the big cornstarch molecules and so these fluids are called as dilatant fluids so let's summarize these newtonian and non-newtonian liquids this is x-axis and this is y-axis and on x-axis we have shear rate centimeter inverse and on y-axis we have shear stress dime per centimeter square so from 0 to 100 again i'm just taking number 0 to 100 so in case of newtonian liquids what's going on well things will be going from the origin that is a newtonian liquid the viscosity of newtonian liquid follows proportional relationship between shear stress and shear rate how about the pseudo plastic liquids well when you are applying the shear stress or when you are applying the shear rate the, the viscosity of pseudo plastic liquid is decreasing so there is a decrease in viscosity in case of dilatant well with application of shear rate or shear stress the viscosity is increasing and how about the plastic well you need to apply certain shear stress and once you apply certain shear stress they follows the newtonian relationship so that's the yield value for the plastic liquids so we have plastic dilatant newtonian and pseudoplastic so that's the way you can summarize but most important thing is that i always ask my student why you want to learn this rheology topic well you are applying that while developing the suspensions or ointment semi-solid formulations isn't it or even you are using in of course in food industries but we are talking about pharmaceutical operations when you are developing the coating solutions you need to understand the rheology of these liquids and that's why you are learning these newtonian and non-newtonian liquids so on that note i end my video here and if you have enjoyed this video please consider subscribing our channel ask and hope to see you in the next video stay safe and stay curious